Have you ever wondered? Wait, I love reading poetry. I should write some poems for pleasure, eh? Trust me, I did. Or at least, I did at some point. Now, I'm not an English literature expert, or even a university student in English literature. I'm a BTEC BDA student in year 13. Last year, I was doing BTEC in applied science, and I didn't necessarily develop a love for poetry or memoirs until recently. In fact, I've always been a science and history fanatic in Key Stage 3, and so it didn't occur to me just how versatile, emotionally capturing and flexible poetry is for the eyes of the reader or the poet. Now, this video isn't about memoirs. Rather, it's about poems. And in my opinion, how rhyming isn't always a good thing. So, I'll talk about memoirs in a later video. And timestamps are on the screen right now, if you want to skip to any one of those sections. And without further ado, let's begin. Poetry, according to Wikipedia, is defined as such a type of art form and a type of literature. Poetry uses the quality of words in different ways to be artistic. Poetry can often be structured into different forms or poetic forms, as they are blissfully called at times. Examples of poetic forms are sonnets, haikus, ballads, staves, odes, free verse, blank verse, thematic, limerick, and of course nursery rhymes. Poetry can be used to describe, compare, express emotions and talk about many things. It can make sense or be nonsense, it can rhyme or not, it can have many shapes and sizes, it can be serious or funny. To say something poetically means to give information in an artistic way. To me, a poem is an abundance of lines that make up even fewer paragraphs. These paragraphs are called stanzas and put together will form a poem. A poem can be as short as a few sentences or as long as a book, also known as an epic. Poems can be based on or can be about anything that you are passionate about, something which you want to voice your opinions on using poetry or it could be an experience, or a place, or a person. Simply put, poems are like books and lyrics, in that the subject matter is of the poet's fancy. They only differ from most literature by having paragraphs shorter than a book, and are most of the time not sung like lyrics from songs, though they can be incorporated into lyrics. Most good songs start out as lines with certain poetic elements in them. That is how you get the poem's ability to work like that of a song, and how songs often sound like poetry with an instrumental in them. It's really, really common to hear readers criticize poems that don't rhyme, suggesting perhaps that the poets concerned were poorly skilled, but a great deal of poetry in the English language doesn't employ rhyme. For example, Black verse, by definition unrhymed, was a form of poetry often favoured by Milton, Shakespeare, Wordsworth, Key, and many others. On the other hand, a great deal of poetry doesn't play rhyme, as rhyme is one of the key ways in which a poet can imbue verse with a sense of structure and meaning. At some point in the creation of each poem, the poet has to make decisions about rhythm, rhyme, form, whether to use verses and so forth. In each case, the decisions made will have implications for how the poem reads. In a more musical form such as a ballad or in a piece of comic verse, strong regular rhymes will probably work. In more serious poems, heavy rhymes might begin to sound forced and ridiculous. A poet should not feel that a poem has to rhyme and that it's what they're creating isn't poetry if it doesn't. What words can't just be thrown together at random without deliberation and careful selection. The requirements of the individual poem in question are all that matter. A poem about discord or confusion, for example, 
might work best with very little to no rhyme at all. A poem with a more harmonious theme might work better with stronger rhyming. It was a gradual step towards poetry in general, but one English lesson two years ago, we were learning about Benjamin Zephaniah, and we had to write our own version of a poem that he wrote. Now, at that time, I did not write poetry because I thought that all poetry must rhyme, and that if there is a poem that doesn't rhyme, it's not normal. And so I believed that I should be writing poetry, even if I wanted to, just because I thought all poems should rhyme. The idea of always making po poems rhyme just doesn't appeal to me that much, because quality over quantity, yes. But the poem's quality shouldn't be based on how it sounds like, in my opinion, but how it feels like. Rather. I don't want any of my poetry to sound like rhymes or anything, but non rhyme poetry didn't seem conventional at all. But rather than just appealing to people's ears, I want people to feel my hand and pen touching the paper, how I feel when I'm writing. So eventually, after my teachers suggested that I give it a shot and that it doesn't have to rhyme. I caved in and I started to write a poem and I finished it within the hour. I handed it over to my teacher and I was expecting her to say that this poem definitely needs to rhyme. She and the other teachers said that they loved it. They said that it was a really great poem. And I was really surprised that time because I didn't really have much confidence in my poem. They loved how I incorporated part of my life into this poem, especially the location that gave the poem its title. Now the poem is called Wells Park and here it goes. I live quite close by the woodland so to speak. So it is natural for me to say this. The woodland, the woodland, inside Wells Park. All the trees and flies and midges. I know that it's not the Scottish highs, but at the end of the day, it's how it thrives. Kind of messed up a little bit, but that's all you're getting. Because I don't want this video to get too long. So afterwards, they encouraged me to write some more poems. And it got to the point where some members of staff at the school, even the bus driver and escorts, noticed that I've been writing and they read them and lo and behold they all loved it. What encourages me to keep writing poetry was there are people out there who would love to read my poetry and to me they just have to make sense and could be about anything really. Personally I don't like to make things right as that's what desensitized me from writing poetry in the first place and reading poetry for the matter. After that lesson, I just went on the writing spree, and I still write poetry to this very day. So all in all, if you want to make your poems rhyme, then go ahead, make them rhyme. Personally, I wouldn't write a poem that rhymes, and if anyone dare tries to ask me to use rhymes in any of my poems at all, the answer you'll probably get from me will be a big fat no. No, I will not write a poem that rhymes, because that is not me. I do not write anything that rhymes because that's not what makes me feel happy when it comes to poetry. When it comes to poetry, I'm more concerned about the structure of the book, not its structure. Sometimes I may be concerned about the structure, but most of the time it's more about the subject. If a poem rhymes are all right, but it doesn't make sense to me, or if a poem rhymes to a great it sounds like a song, and it does not delve into the poet's experience, that subject matter, what doesn't delve into the location of interest or personal interest, then chances are I will just not read the poem. I think that Emily Dickinson is a phenomenal poet, especially for her time. A few days ago, I stumbled upon a poem of hers called I Measure Every Grief I Meet, and it's a great poem. Not because it rhymes. In fact, most of the stanzas don't even contain rhymes. The poem probably contains just one or two rhymes from the top of my head that I can remember. 
And if you want me to read it, then just let me know in the comments down below. Now, anyways, one of the few reasons that I love the poem is because it makes sense. And she's talking about all forms of grief in that poem. Not just the one that comes about death, but also going about your separate ways with somebody. It could be a friend, or it could be a family member that disowned you. It could be a significant other who you have divorced or broken up with. It's subject matter that appeals to me. Not if it rhymes or sounds like something that you can sing to. Another reason that I really, really love Emily Dickinson at the moment is that she always uses dashes in her poems. And at that time when she was writing poems, people were so baffled about her use of dashes. Like, it's a religious use of dashes. Like, every single one of her poems contains dashes. So they were edited out into commas and full stops and other forms of punctuation after her death because she was not recognised until after her death. Eventually, the centuries went by and and those poems have been re-edited to reinstate, if you will, dashes and that's what makes her a unique poet. She's a great poet for her era and probably one of the best of any modern era for these reasons. It's mostly about the grief and emotion that her experiences in life as a 19th century woman or more that content. It's also her use of dashes because it's really about the subject matter which appeals to me a whole lot but also the dashes. To me at least, I think she was the first person ever to be using dashes constantly in every single one of her poems and not many people since have been using dashes as frequently as she has done. And so I admire her work a lot, and I will continue to read her until the day I die. Okay, not until I die. <laughs> that sounds grim. Especially considering what's going on outside right now, but... You get what I mean. Let me know if you loved this video in the comments section down below. To the study tubers out there, in the study tube community, especially those running the study tube... Study tube? Sorry. The study tube project channel, well done, because you're all doing an absolutely wonderful thing, keeping us all sane during this pandemic, and I'm very honoured to be talking about my topic on behalf of you guys. You can tell I'm, I'm getting pretty nervous here, because I'm stumbling on my words, but anyways, hit the thumbs up. If you like this video and if you want to follow my channel, then just search up the channel, which is on this screen right now. I'm being cheesy, but you know. Subscribe and hit the bell, and also subscribe to the StudyTube project and all the YouTubers who run that channel, and also. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and other socials. Links in the description, as usual, are down below. But anyways, I'll stop talking, and I'll see you guys in another video. Right here though, and goodbye.